What's up, guys? It's us, the Chainsmokers, and you're watching Stingray Paws Play. I'm Zach Monson, and welcome back to a very special edition of Stingray Paws Play here in Montreal with a band that I don't have to introduce, but I will anyway, the Chainsmokers. Howdy. Hi, guys. Howdy. How are you? Pretty good. Good. So great to see you. Um, right off the bat, how did you guys meet each other? What's your first memory of kind of being in each other's company? Um, I remember, so Alex started the chain smokers with this other kid and the other kid wanted to go start like his own solo thing. And Alex wanted to pat, bring someone else into the band. And so like, I remember meeting him and the other kid together and I didn't know which one was going to be, was who, or was going to, I was going to be in the band with. And I remember hoping it was him. And then we met at some like club and we went to Avenue. Yeah. Poor other guy. What is he doing now? Not know. being in the chain smokers, yeah, that's for sure. And I'm not sure. Yeah, sorry that yeah. dude. Um you guys are so much more of a band now than you are a DJ duo. There's keyboards and pianos, and you know, you got Mike the drummer on stage and you're singing so much. So when was the kind of evolution to that? When did that kind of come into your head well before it came into the stage? Um, I mean, obviously, I guess it started kind of with Drew singing on closer. Um, we didn't like play as a band yet, but you know, he would sing the song while we played it, and that was like, okay, this is like a lot more fun and interesting for the crowd. And then uh, it also kind of just allowed us the freedom to make music differently. You know, it wasn't just about like creating a record that people could jump up and down to. It was like, oh, we can kind of perform this music in a different way. And we've always been huge fans of bands and the connection that, you know, front man and the, you know, different band mates can have with the crowd and the different like dynamics and songs. So that was really appealing to us. And, uh, we, you know, found Matt on YouTube doing drum covers and asked him to join the band. And I, you know, the rest is kind of history, but it's, you know, it took us a long ways to get the show as tight as it is now. And, um, it's still an ongoing thing, but I think it, we found a really nice balance between like giving people a really fun show that's like a club environment, but also like those band live moments that are exciting. And there's a big difference between kind of, you know, playing a keyboard in the studio or singing a vocal in the booth and being able to melodyne it or whatever, have you guys had to kind of really gear yourselves up and practice a ton to kind of get to a place where you can perform on stage all the time? Yeah, totally. I mean, and, and it's even harder than just doing lessons. A lot of it comes from experience too. Like, you know, I, I take vocal lessons every day. Alex takes like piano lessons, practice pianos two hours every day. Matt plays drums two hours a day um, on top of like rehearsals and everything else. But I mean, a lot of it comes from like going out there and just doing it because you can like sing in rehearsal. But when there's like, you know, the energy of the crowd is different every night. So like that's something they got to get used to. And like how, how do you perform and do your thing in front of like changing circumstances? So, you know, um, but we've been, we've done like probably over 200 shows as a band now. So like, I think we're, we're pretty much on it now. <laughs> So we asked the last artist that we had in to ask you guys a question. The artist is Louis Capaldi, mm -hmm. and the question for you is, I I'm sorry him. I have to ask you this question. Hello, I'm Louis Capaldi, and my question for you is, would you rather sleep with your dad to save your mum's life or sleep with your mum to save your dad's life? I don't want to answer this. <laughs> my because dad's because, on because tour. your dad's my on dad's tour, on with, tour with us. Like, <laughs> can we have sex with each other's parents? <laughs> you know what? If, if that's a thing that you've been thinking about, I will let you have that. Okay, I will let you have what a it. A horrible thing. Yeah. yeah, good. There's no answer. There's no proper answer, so yeah, I will yeah. accept sleeping with his parents. Dad, my dad's like an earshot right now. <laughs> Sorry, bro. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, World War Joy. These aren't just kind of festival bangers. These are mature, evolved, well-crafted songs. The project is out. Not all the songs are out yet. So why the concept of kind of putting everything out, giving it a title, putting it all together, and then slowly kind of releasing extra little bits? Uh, well, we believe in like chronicalizing music as an artist. And when we started this album, we, you know, talked for a while and we we're like, this is what we want this album to sound like and what we want it to represent. Um, and we do, we, we like started releasing, you know, music as by singles from like from the beginning. And that's just kind of naturally like what we like to do. We're always changing. We're always like getting new inspiration from things. So, you know, we kind of like had a thesis for the album and then we've kind of like let ourselves like kind of go on this adventure and decide, you know, spur of the moment, what's going to be the next song. Like, and we've, uh, I don't know, just like better for like, and we're always touring too. So we're always touring, always writing. We wanted to kind of keep the pace uh, of our release strategy with the pace of what we, yeah. we do every day. Yeah. And you guys are showcasing some amazing artists, Ty Dolla Sign, obviously BB Rexa, and two great Canadians who I love, Len and Stella and yeah. Bullo. Yeah. How did you guys kind of come across those two and decide that they were 
a perfect yeah. fit for the album. Uh, I mean, Below was recommended to us by our friend Emily Warren, who we've done a ton of songwriting yeah. with. She put us onto a couple of her songs, and we were like, this is incredible songwriting. Uh, we did a session with her, and I think we just like hung out more than wrote music the first time. But then we sent her, Do You Mean? And we were like, can you please you know, like write a verse for this, sing the hook. She was like super open to it and crushed it. And so that was awesome, you know, to be a part of her narrative. Um, and then Lennon, we, I can't remember when we first met Lennon, but like her voice is just incredible. We did Unreal. a session with her too. Yeah, yeah, we I guess we did. a different song that I think is going to come out, but someone else is going to sing it. Yeah. Right, well, she gets right her credits. Oh yeah, that's right. Her. She didn't miss, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah she didn't miss you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. don't worry, we'll yeah. send the name of that song. And, uh, but she's absolutely amazing. She's like the coolest girl. She, her voice is like superb. I mean, like we've always thought like we read a lot with Emily Warren and it's very hard to beat an Emily Warren vocal. Yeah. And I feel like Lennon is like the same, like up there. Um, I, I same with BB too. Agree. They're just incredible vocalists. And I think she's just, she's already killing it, but like she, I think she's just getting started. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, you guys have done so many remixes. It feels like so long ago. Yeah. When's the last time you guys remixed a song? Yeah. We haven't remixed a song for Probably like six years, five years, five years maybe. Is that something that you guys want to dig back into? Because I mean, once you're in a position where you're on the radio all the time, you kind of have a big following, you can do whatever you want. Remixes to some might seem like a step backwards, but I, you guys are so great at it. But. I don't see it as a step backwards, but I think we're more stimulated by writing our own songs yeah. and having our own lyrics. And that's something that's like we started doing. And like, I think that's our favorite part of making music. So... The other part's like producing is the hard part now, you know? Yeah, right. Yeah. So never again? Maybe I don't know. Maybe again? I'm not saying never. It just has to be the right song and like, or, or some song that we vibed with or we're like, I wish it did that, but it doesn't do yeah, that. Right. So let's make a version that does that and then yeah, put right. it out. But yeah. Well, guys, I'm such a fan of you. You guys just continue to impress me. You know, you've come a long way since Selfie. You guys have matured <laughs> and evolved so much. And I just Thanks. can't wait to see you guys do next. So thank, thank you, you so much for Thank talking you. To me. I yeah. really appreciate it. You can hear the Chainsmokers on Stinger Music's Hitless Channel, Dance Club, and Eclect Electronic, Pop Adult, and more. Get the web player, the mobile app, find the magnifying glass search icon, type in Chainsmokers, one word, to find all the channels we put the music on. We'll see you next time, guys. Yeah.